Next act on the calendar, item number 25, an act by Senator Acosta, an act related to state affairs and government, statewide body worn camera program. Senator Acosta. Thank you, Mr. President. And um, I want to start by saying that the conversation, the broader conversation around the bill that we have before us today was very different 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and even one year ago. The relationship between law enforcement and the communities that they serve around the country is, is fractured at the moment. We have what some sociologists would call a legitimation crisis, where the institution that we look to to provide us with support and to save us in some of the most precarious situations is also one that many of the communities they serve are terrified of. And I don't want to belabor the point because I had mentioned some of these things in the press conference, but what I would say is that we've grown increasingly aware that it's a relationship that needs repairing. And part of that has been because of the proliferation of technology, camera phones, and body cams. And so 10 years ago, when we were having this conversation, it was cost prohibitive. There was reluctance and pushback on the side of law enforcement. The community felt all we'd be doing is putting more money into this and nothing is going to change. And then we've spent the last couple of years watching people die on video around the country. And in our own state, we've watched people being mistreated by people in law enforcement. And we've also seen the way that the members of the public will sometimes cross the line in their engagement with law enforcement. And so this bill is one very small step at trying to repair the relationship between law enforcement and the communities they serve. It's a bill that was created with a lot of the stakeholders at the table, including civil rights organization, legislators, activists, and law enforcement themselves. It's a bill that is not an unfunded mandate. It is a program that allows for the adoption of body cameras by departments who agree to a set of policies, procedures, and protocols as laid out by the Attorney General that include proper use of equipment, data and equipment security, activation and deactivation of cameras, notification to the public of recording, records retention procedures and timeliness, access to data by law enforcement and the public, privacy concern, uh, protections including redaction procedures and compliance monitoring. This will not be a silver bullet. The work that needs to be done between communities and law enforcement is a long road. There is a culture issue that we need to address, but we know that this is one step that, at least right now, all the parties are willing to take. And so I want to thank the Senate leadership. I want to thank the House leadership. I want to thank the Attorney General's office, um, all the law enforcement departments that worked on this, including the Rhode Island Police Chiefs Association. This bill creates a $15 million program over the next five years that would fully fund equipping 1,700 officers across the state with body cameras should they choose to accept the policies laid out by the Attorney General. I also want to give a huge shout out uh, to Nicole Verdi, <laughs> our legal counsel who supported the, the drafting of this bill, and to someone who I, has not been mentioned at all, but Representative uh, Leslie Harat out of Colorado, who picked up the phone and was willing to engage in the conversation with me about what law enforcement reform looked like there, the strides that they had made, and some lessons learned, and was willing to, to give some advice. So shout out to her and, and her people out in Colorado for all the work that they're doing, and for the state of Rhode Island for being able to take this big first step. And with that, I move passage, Mr. President. We have a motion to move passage, seconded by. Senator McCaffrey, Senator Goodwin, Senator Chacon, Senator Anderson, Senator Miller, Senator Felix, Senator Susnowski, Senator Burke, Senator Shambo, Senator Carno, Senator Bell, Senator Raptakis, Senator Valverde, Senator De Palma, Senator Mario, Senator Lombardi, Senator Coleman, Senator Casada, Senator Pearson, President Ruggiero. Discussion on the act. Senator Raptakis. Thank you, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate. I also rise to second this important legislation by Senator Acosta and commend him. During the debate in Senate Judiciary, I asked quite a few questions. And my main thought was, why aren't we just going ahead and implement 
this great piece of legislation because I think that's what we want. The cost is minimal. We're talking less than 0.001% of the state budget. I know we have to vet out the process. We have to have all stakeholders craft the rules and regulations. But in a few years from now, when this program goes through its initial stage of five years, I think that this Senate should take the lead and have the courage to fully fund this program for every police department in the state of Rhode Island. Not just worry what the cost is going to be. And I think it sends a strong message that it is a very good piece of legislation and good public policy for all Rhode Islanders. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Mack. Your light is lit. Thank you, Mr. President. And I, um, I wanted to also commend my colleague, Senator Acosta, um, for this important piece of legislation to start documenting uh, the ways in which policing has been harmful, particularly to um, black, brown, indigenous communities. Um, and while this is a very important step to finishing the conversation that uh, really started last summer with the, the murder of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and uh, hundreds of other names, I think we should continue as a chamber to um, think of ways that we can honor those who have been lost to police brutality um, and keep the conversation going in passing more and more uh, legislation that will allow us to authentically um, rebuild a relationship between community members and increase the trust of policing. But I, I do appreciate this bill and this chamber um, working towards um, a better future. Thank Thanks. you, Senator. Senator Miller. I want to tell a story of, um, that's a little contradictory to what we've heard about why I support this legislation. It's one reason why I support it amongst the others that have already been articulated. Um, many of you probably don't know that I serve on the Providence Police Advisory Council, which has no powers. It's really just to exchange ideas and concerns with the Providence Police Department. And it's made up of pastors. It's made up of the Institute for Nonviolence, a few attorneys who are community activists, the Attorney General, and several others, and um, at least 30 people who meet uh, before. Historically, we had met um, every quarter, uh, but in the last year, based on a lot of um, activity that everybody's aware of, whether it's the pandemic or going back to George Floyd and a lot of it, uh, based on what we've seen on body camps and the, the issues that those body camps have brought up. But I want to bring also up an incident we have, uh, sometimes we see video that's not ready to be presented to the public because it hasn't been redacted, um, there hasn't been the proper paperwork done um, for many reasons. And um, on our last meeting, which happened to be last week, they showed us the body cam footage of what many of you might be familiar with, which was a homeless encampment um, in the Elwood neighborhood that has been the center of a lot of concern and difficulty in trying to find these people housing. And I bring up um, this incident in the context of this legislation because this legislation is not only going to show and protect citizens by having the body cam review um, uh, be available to review an incident that protects the citizen, it's also going to protect policemen. And it's also going to have video like what I saw in this video that is going to make you proud of police that have been properly trained and have an incredible amount of compassion. And I, I believe that once this video is released, it could potentially be national training video on how to handle a situation like that. They were called by the neighborhood to respond to certain complaints about what had happened in the homeless encampment. To every person they encountered in there, the compassion was tremendous. And 
the concern was contradictory to what you saw on the video. And to, uh, someday people will understand the comprehensiveness on how body cam video can work in many, many ways to improve uh, police citizen relationships in this video is a classic example and I hope you all have the opportunity in the near future to see that video and the compassion they showed to the people in that call. Therefore, I support and second the legislation. Thank you, Senator. Senator Casada, your light is lit. You wish to change a vote from a, um, an affirmative to a negative on item number 24? Without objection, and it doesn't change the outcome, so moved. Senator De La Cruz, your light is lit. Uh, thank you. I want to echo some of the sentiments that uh, Senator Miller just made, because I think they were very excellent points. Um, the bill before us, they've, they've got some excellent parts to the legislation that I agree with and some parts that I don't. But there is um, broad support um, amongst many of the, um, the uh, law enforcement and other groups. Um, and so I'm supporting this bill not because I think that our police force um, has uh, issues of police brutality or that they're unfairly treating um, their fellow citizens, but I feel that um, I, sh I think it's a good bill to support because uh, as Senator Miller had pointed out, is also going to highlight how great our police force is. And we want to keep everyone accountable. But again, I'll be voting for this legislation, not because I think that there's an issue with our police force here in our state. I think they do a great job. Thank you, Senator. Senator Feline. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I, too, uh, commend the sponsor and the Senate leadership for uh, bringing this legislation forth. And I believe that Senator Miller hit the nail on the head, where the important aspect of it is that if you're a policeman, this will highlight the great work that you do. Every day, uh, our police people are out there uh, working diligently on behalf of the constituents. Obviously, there's always a few bad apples, but those are the ones that end up getting in the press and, and deserve the, uh, the uh, issues that they encounter and uh, should be f fully prosecuted, but the majority of our police officers do diligent work and this is going to highlight what they do on a daily basis and I believe our taxpayers are gonna recognize and notice the outstanding work that they do, so thank you. Thank you, Senator. Further discussion on the act? There being none, clerk, please unlock the machine. Has everyone had a chance to vote? Senator Morgan, are you having difficulties? <laughs> Clerk, please lock the machine. There are 38 in the positive, none in the negative. The act passes.